I'm going to get all my stuff situated before I get started. I don't know what's going to happen when I turn this on. Can y'all hear me? Is that on? Well, I would just want to say thank you so much for, for first of all, for giving me the chance to be able to, to, to share this uh, experience. So last Sunday I was sick as a dog, and I couldn't have done it for anything, but, uh, but appreciate a second chance on that. And uh, I also want to just say thank you so much for... The, the fish fry fundraiser, that's a tongue twister for me. But uh, that was a big success. And uh, that night that uh, after that, I was wanting to say something, but I was afraid I'd break down. It was just an overwhelming response to that. I just want to thank you all so very much for the, the love and support that I felt from that. And, uh, and also for the, the toothbrushes and the, the toothpaste, uh, the... I think it was like a week and a half before we left. Uh, that's when I found out about it, and I hate, hate to even bring it up, but uh, I said, well, they wanted us to try to bring some, so I'm going to mention it. And uh, the response, again, was overwhelming, and I, I just appreciate it very much. We actually had uh, I had one suitcase that was 49 and a half pounds of, of toothpaste and toothbrushes, and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was packed slam full. I had 53 pounds in it. I had to take some out. We could only take two bags, 50 pounds, but... Uh, but that was a that was awesome response, and uh, my my bag was forty three pounds, I believe, and I was able to pack some in it too. So uh, so we went in at forty nine and a half, and one was fifty pounds. But that was a that was an awesome response on that. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, Brother Ruben mentioned this a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and uh, I could very very much feel your prayers. And uh, I hope when I get to certain parts of this I hope I remember to tell you how much uh, if I don't I'll tell you later but uh, but I did feel your prayers very very much and uh, just thanks for the support and love that I felt and I just want to start with uh, a couple verses of scripture Isaiah 55 10 through 12 for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Uh, on our flight, one of our flights home, I don't remember which one, I believe it was the first one or the second one on our flights home, I was reflecting back over our mission uh, experience, and uh, this first come to my mind, and uh, that was that's, that's the reason I wanted to, to start with it. But uh, and now I'll kind of go through some of our, uh, I'll start back at the first of it. There was a, uh, on Tuesday, July 30th, about mid-morning, we flew out of Monroe. Uh, it was a short flight to Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, we had a layover there, uh, five or six hours. We flew from there to Doha. It was like uh, 14 hours. That was a long trip. That was, your knees get mighty tired. Uh, but uh, then we flew from, from Doha to Nairobi. And uh, they was eight hours ahead of us. So, but anyway, we arrived in Nairobi around 11:25 p.m. on Wednesday, July 31st, and uh, we was able to to claim our baggage. Uh, the lady, uh, let me go through the ones that went with us. Uh, it was five from Kansas uh, that went with us, and Randy White and I went. And then, uh, but the five from Kansas, it was uh, a lady and her son, Kendra Trueblood and Isaac Trueblood. And then it was uh, another lady and her son, Rachel Decker and Kobe Decker. And then uh, uh, Pastor Ezekiel didn't get to make it with us, but uh, his wife, Alice, did. She got to go with us, and uh, she was actually a very big help. Uh, but anyway, after we, after we got our bags kind of claimed and uh, 
I, I did have her phone number in a group text, so I called her, and she was outside waiting on us, and we finally got together, because we had never met her, and uh, the others were behind us. They were still trying to get through and get out, uh, get, get out of customs and all. But anyway, uh, we all got together there. Uh, it was in the wee hours of the morning. We drove. Uh, we did have, like, that night we had two drivers. Uh, the whole trip, we basically had four drivers, and they was, they was very good people that, uh, that helped us. Sometimes if we had more luggage, uh, it would be two drivers and sometimes just one, but uh, most of the time just one. But that night we had two, and... Uh, we drove about 10 to 15 miles out of out of Nairobi and uh, to a little place called Daguna, and uh, we didn't do much that night. We just went on to sleep, and the uh, the next morning we had we had breakfast there near Daguna, and uh, we changed our money into shillings, and also we traveled most of the day that day. We traveled to to Tenwick uh, Mission Hospital. Uh, we got there, it was before dark, but we got there pretty late that evening, and we just kind of settled in. We didn't do a whole lot that evening. Uh, now, Friday, August the 2nd, this is our first day of work. Uh, that morning on the way to work, we probably four or five miles, I guess, down the road, we, we was behind a car that had just run over a small child, and uh, this was a sad time. Uh, the we could hear people screaming and crying and hollering, and we didn't we didn't know what was going on. I I didn't. Uh, we was trying to figure out what was going on, but uh, we come up on this car. We knew it was a car in the road up on the hill, and he was turned sideways. And uh, we pulled around in front of him, and uh, they was dragging the kid out of the ditch. And uh, then she picked him up by his armpits, and uh, he he was as limp as I've ever seen him. By his feet was hanging straight down. It was a it was a bad time, and uh, but they they got in the car and, and took off. I guess going back toward the hospital, but uh, but it was a that was a bad deal. But uh, we went on the the place that we went to every day when we left the Tenwick place where we were staying there in Tenwick. Uh, it was a at least an hour and a half. It wasn't that far, but it just seemed like it took forever but it took at least an hour and a half to two hours every day to get there they had a lot of speed bumps uh they had paved roads but uh almost all the way there but uh they had speed bumps you could get up to full speed then they had to slow down then cross them and go and it was a bunch of those but anyway the place the the name of the church and the the little area there was called olin garoon or something uh but well, we got there the first morning and uh, the first morning to work, and uh, we greeted all of them. It was a lot of ladies that come out to greet us and several of the guys. The, the pastor that was over, he was over five of the churches in that area, and uh, they wasn't too far apart because I had seen four of the churches, uh, but they were all uh, the same name of the church. and I, uh, It was the AGC, All Gospel Church, and... Uh, I kept, uh, we, well, anyway, we got there that morning, and we met them all, and they was kind of anxious for us to get working. I think we was, too, and, uh, but uh, we got there, and, and I, all I knew was they wanted us to help them a little bit with the plumbing and, and some of the walls, you know, but, uh, but I knew they had already poured the slab, so I wouldn't, you know, I said, well, they done got the plumbing done. Well, we got there and we walked out on the, and I was looking for any pipes and I didn't, couldn't see any pipes and uh, we looked around and the, the slab was definitely poured and uh, so they showed me the plans and it had, uh, <clears throat> it had uh, four toilets, six showers, five lavatories and three hand wash sinks and uh, I was like, uh, where's the pipes? And uh, they they pointed to us and uh, so basically the the first day to, to make a real long story short the the first day we just kind of got on the same page with trying to communicate and uh, cause I I was thinking at first well they they going they gonna possibly build the floor up or something they got to do something we got to get this plumbing in there but all they wanted us to do was to show them 
were to chip out, and they, it was like three of them. They got down there in hammers and cold chills, and they went to chipping out the concrete. Now, their concrete was like, kind of like between our grout and our concrete. It wasn't near as hard. But anyway, they started chipping out that, and uh, we had to start making up a material list, and uh, that was a, a pretty good uh, ordeal in itself, going up town and trying to find fittings. Uh, they did have everything we needed, thank God. Uh, but their fittings were nothing like we use, Uncle Don. They, <laughs> all they had was T's and, and 90's. They didn't even have couplings. They had pipe. Uh, but they didn't have to have couplings. They they made, they swedged the pipe and made it theirself. Uh, that was pretty neat. They, he'd run up there and to the fire and heat it and swedge it and bring it back. and It, it would work some. Not, not real, real good, but and their glue was like in a small paint can. Uh, it opened like a paint can with a screwdriver, and you just take a brush and try to do the best you can. And and uh, I still think there was one boy that I didn't even see until we got to the supply house or the little hardware store. But he actually he actually understood plumbing a little bit. He he done a lot of plumbing over there, and uh, he knew the way that they normally done plumbing, which was a lot different, and I thank God for him. Uh, but when he seen that glue, he said, that's glue. And I said, I've never used it either. And uh, he, he was doing like normally it's on a stick. And I said, I know, but this is all they had. And uh, so they was going to go back and get some more fittings that evening. And uh, I said, well, get some good glue. But he come back, same thing. So, so anyway, we went with it. But uh, let's see. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, but the first day, basically, we was trying to get on the same page, and, and we did get it laid out to where they could start chipping out, and uh, they got most of the ditches dug outside all the way down to a pit, and uh, they, had a, they had a pit down there. It was a 14 by 8, 14 foot long, 8 foot wide pit, and uh, they had like two big old rocks kind of wedged, poured in the top. And uh, they was trying to break a hole through there, so they, they kind of chipped around it and wiggled out one of the rocks. And uh, the, one of the young boys that went with us, he looked, he saw the sun shining in there, and he said, uh, that thing's deep, Jay. And I said, uh, I figured it was eight or ten foot deep, you know. And uh, so I went and got my flashlight, and I shined. It was uh, 35 foot deep. And uh, so I asked him. Some of them could understand you, some of them couldn't, but... Uh, I asked him, I said, uh, how did y'all dig that thing with a tractor or something? He said, uh-huh. So later I was talking to, to Pastor Ezekiel's brother, uh, Pastor Edward, and uh, he now he he could speak a lot of English, and he understood us pretty good. But I asked him, I said, uh, how did y'all get a tractor and dig it that deep with it in that short a place? And uh, he said, it wasn't no tractor. We dug it by hand. <laughs> and uh, the humans and uh I said, y'all wasn't worried about it falling in or caving in on it? He said, no. I guess they got good ground. But anyway, that thing was very, very deep. Uh, that first day when we was trying to get everything, uh, get organized and all, the, the ladies did have time to bond, start bonding with the kids, and that was very good. They bonded with the women that helped cook. And... Uh, they never got in a hurry about anything. If they planned a certain time, it just... That was just a time. That was just a number. They didn't really go by it. They just, whenever everybody got ready. And, uh, but we, we, we would be out there working. It seemed like we just got started. And they'd call us in for tea. And uh, when they called you in for tea, it was just like a meal around here. I mean, it was uh, tea and coffee and juice and uh, bananas, oranges, and all kind of stuff. And uh, well, then about three or so, they would call us in for lunch. And, uh, Man, and then we would get back to the other place, and then they'd be wanting us to eat supper, and I was like, man, this is, <laughs> this is good. But, uh, <laughs> so, but anyway, one funny thing that, that, uh, that we saw that day was uh, they had hauled our pipe out there on motorcycles. And that was very, very interesting, but they did. They tied it to the motorcycle. It was 13-foot joints, and they hauled it to the work site. <laughs> Uh, the second day, the second day of work day, uh, Saturday, August the 3rd, this day was totally different. 
from the first day, the first work day. The first work day was actually pretty stressful, and we was trying to communicate. But the second day, I could. That's one day I could feel y'all's prayers, cause. I mean, everything fell in place. We started doing the plumbing, and uh, we actually got we actually got through with every bit of it that day. And uh, I was I was worried that we wouldn't even get through by Monday. They had told us before we got there that if we would help them do the plumbing, start on the walls, they said by Monday evening that they would be out of funds, and that was just that's what they wanted us help us help us to do uh, help them to do. But anyway. Uh, we we was able to get through that day, so we we knew that we could, and also we took up a collection. We we took up a donation among the ones that went, and they was able to get some stuff. Uh, I think it was either Saturday evening or Monday morning, but they was able to get some more materials. So y'all will see on a picture later that they they was able to keep going, and uh, they had to get some concrete and uh, some bag. They would get big old bags of concrete, and. Uh, they, they was awful heavy. I, I reached down and grabbed one, and I thought it was like a 80-pound bag. I don't know how much that thing weighed, but it was sure heavy. And uh, I thought, actually, I thought, I said, well, I must just be feeling weak or tired. But uh, I picked up an 80-pound bag at Cody's the other day, and it was a lot lighter than that bag over there. So I don't know how much that bag weighed. But uh, but anyway, uh, that Saturday, I mean, that Friday, that Friday, I'm going to back up just a little bit, but uh, that Friday they had asked, the, some of the ladies had asked some of the kids if they was coming to church that Sunday. And some of them that were there that day, I mean, kids would walk by and uh, they were probably two miles off of, a, off of a small road, I'd say, a kind of a small road. But uh, a lot of them in that area had never even seen people from America. And uh, you would see people all the time. They would be looking, and they would they would be watching and stuff. And uh, but they had asked some of them kids that were there that day. They had asked them if they was coming to church Sunday, and some of them said, "No, we we go to another church." So uh, so we had decided Friday night or Saturday morning one that we was going to take uh, take the suitcase with uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste, and uh, and they was able to pass out some. They probably passed out maybe maybe like a sixth of them or eighth of them. They passed out a good many that that day, and uh, that was good. And uh, they, I could hear we was out there working, but I could hear that lady. She said, "Y'all go tell Mr. J, thank you." And uh, they started coming down there. And I walked up there and I said, "These were from our church family back home." And uh, but they that that was a that was a real blessing. It was kids, probably I don't know. I'd say maybe two two and a half years old that would come up there and they could barely talk, shake your hand and say, thank you, thank you. Now, some of them was real shy, like me. They was real shy, but uh, some of them was outgoing. They'd want to they'd wanna give you a high five, and uh, they, was, uh, they was fun to be around. But uh, now that day there, that day one funny thing that we saw, we saw five people on one motorcycle. <laughs> and we... <laughs> We had seen four people before, and we thought that was the, the most outrageous thing, but uh, we saw five people, and I don't think none of them were sitting on the gas tank. I don't think. They was all just, they was all holding on, and I was thinking, if that second one comes off, they're going to all come off. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was very funny there. I wish we could have got a picture of that, but uh, okay, Sunday, August the 4th, uh, Sunday was a good day, but it was very busy. We uh, they started their service at ten thirty. Uh, the children came up and sang. It was a uh, we'll see that on a, some video. Well, I don't know if it'd be the same one in the church or not, but uh, the children came up and sang. It was mostly children there. I, I'd say probably I don't know a hundred, maybe one hundred thirty children, maybe. But uh, the then after that, the women came up and sang. Uh, it was a pretty good meeting. They had, they had four of us sitting up on the stage, and then two of us sitting on the front row. And then they had a area over here that was a pretty big area, like their uh, choir area. And uh, but then later the men came up and sang, and uh, they told us later that that was uh, they had five churches there at that 
that same area deal, but uh, that was two of the five that had come. The others had something they had to do that day, but uh, the two of the five had showed up that day. Uh, <clears throat> there was a lady from our church, I mean from our group uh, from Kansas, uh, Kendra. She got up and spoke. She spoke a little bit. Uh, she had read some out of a book, and then she read 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, this is one spot uh, also where I could very much feel your prayers. Uh, they they gave me the opportunity to speak that day, and uh, I knew she was almost through, and uh, I was thinking, I know they're praying for me because I, I was very, I mean, maybe just a tiny bit nervous, but not really very much. And I said, normally I'm so nervous I can't even think straight. So I said, I know they're praying for me back home. But uh, Alice, Alice, uh, Pastor Ezekiel's wife, she was, uh, she was our translator. And I didn't know how that was going to be. Uh, I was thinking... I was thinking that it would probably be hard, like while you was trying to figure out what you was going to say, I figured while she was talking, I would get off track, and if I get off track and get nervous, it's almost over with me, but uh, but anyway, it was very easy, it was the other way, it was really easy, while she was, while she was talking, uh, I could look down and see what I needed to say next, and uh, but uh I was just kind of wanting to go through a little bit of what God had led me to say to them. Not not all of it by any means, but just a little bit of it. But uh, uh, okay, the, I started off with uh, just kind of like encouraging them to study God's word, to to get into God's word, to absorb God's word. And it was funny when I got back the the Saturday night when I got back that Sunday night, Brother Reuben preached. Uh, Something similar to that to stay in God's word to study it and uh, but uh, went over several verses a couple of them was uh, Psalms 119.11 and Psalms 119.105 uh, 119.11 is thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee and uh, Psalms 119.105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and then I was, uh, but it was several, it was some more verses in there too. But uh, I told them that we have an enemy. First Peter 5, 8 says, be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And, uh, you know, like a, a lion out in the wild or whatever, he, they look for, for weak, they look for weak prey. And, uh, you know, if we get out of God's word, if we get off the path, uh, you know, the, the word will keep us on the path. We can see the light. And, uh, but, but Satan wants, he wants to, to isolate us from our church family. He, now, if we're a Christian, he can't destroy us, but he can, he can definitely make it hard on us. He can, uh, he can destroy our testimony or hurt our testimony. But, uh, but anyway, we just have to stay in God's word and, and, uh, and, uh, Look to God for strength. And then I just, uh, the Lord had led me to, to go down uh, just a simple verses of the Roman road, uh, Romans 3, 23. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, uh, you know, all is, is every single person. And uh, we all have come short. Now, Romans six twenty three was next. Uh, this is probably, this was probably the focal point. Uh, for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord this is where we have a choice uh, you know if we if we reject Jesus Christ then then there's a, a penalty that we got to pay for our sins and this is death and hell forever forever and ever but God don't God wants us to accept his son Jesus and uh he wants us to accept the free gift and to spend eternity with Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh but he does give us a choice and this is where this is where we really have to you know uh we we want to do what God wants us to do. And it, which leads to the next verse. It says uh, Romans 5:8 uh but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Uh he presented his love as suitable or approved for approval or acceptance. He recommended his love for us. He wants us to accept his son, Jesus Christ. 
And uh, before we even knew that there was a way for salvation, he had already provided a way. And uh, and then I went uh, Romans ten thirteen. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever is each and every person, and uh, in this room and in the the, the church at uh, Kenya, uh, every everybody, anybody that uh, calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And uh, there's only one way to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. John fourteen six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We can't earn our way. We can't work our way. We can't be good enough to to be saved. We have to come through Jesus Christ. And uh, we went. I went through a few more verses, but I ended with these three. Uh, and uh, you know, you, you just don't want people to think that they have it all figured out on their own. And uh, I know Brother Reuben preaches about this a lot. Uh, you just, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We, we don't need to even trust our own understanding unless it comes from God. We need to be careful with that. Uh, Proverbs 21, 2, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Uh, and I ended with this verse. This is one of my one of my new favorite verses. Uh, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And uh, but after after the service that morning, uh, we did we passed out the toothpaste and the brushes. Uh, I would say probably a record time. It was about fifteen twenty minutes or less. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was. We got pictures too of a of a line of the kids coming. Uh, after the kids come through, I know some of them had two. Uh, I know the first one I realized had two. Uh, we was we would get a brush and toothpaste, and it was several of us working together trying to hand them out. And uh, one little boy, he was probably three or so. He he kind of grabbed it a little fast, and uh, I looked, and he had one in this hand, and he had and he grabbed it in this hand. <laughs> I said, you don't got two of them in there, but I didn't, we didn't care. I was just saying that, but uh, it was funny to me. They, they was used to getting whatever they could get their hands on, I'm going to tell you. And uh, they was really thankful for it, too. But the women, after that, we, uh, Alice, she was kind of talking. She would tell them uh, different things, like to line up and stuff. Uh, but like the women, uh, she said, I, we want the women to come up because when we – Basically, when we got through giving out to the kids, uh, we didn't have a whole lot left, and uh, so we gave we we had some packs of like five or so, and uh, we had some bigger packs. But anyway, we started giving them out to the women, and uh, they didn't snatch them like the kids, some of the kids, but uh, they was very very happy to get them. I tell you that. Uh, and one there was one toothbrush in my bottom of my suitcase that was a. Uh, uh, it was clean. It just fell out of the pack because we had to cut some of the long strips. We had to cut them with a knife or either tear them. But there was one in there that wasn't covered, and I said, I don't know if they want it or not. But I held it up, and I said, anybody want this? And shoop, it was gone. <laughs> it was gone before I even got through saying that, so they were very happy to get them. Uh, but after this, after this, we walked down to Pastor Edwards' house. It was probably three-eighths of a mile or so. I, I don't know exactly, but... Uh, and like I said, we, we were supposed to show, we, we was going to show the Jesus film at 2 and then uh, around 3 or so. But like I said, they don't get in any hurry. And uh, around 2.15 or 2.30, we uh, we started coming back up. The, actually, Pastor Edward and uh, a few of us come back up the hill toward the church. And uh, we had to wait for somebody to unlock the church, which was good. And uh, there was there was a few kids there already, and uh, but probably didn't get started to I don't know. We had to put uh, we had to put sheets and stuff on the on the windows and to make it a little bit darker. But anyway, it was probably three or so before we got started showing it. And uh, but it was good. We showed the, the the children's version was one hour long, and then uh, right after that, uh, probably maybe ten minutes or so, we. We got going on the uh, the adult version. 
But the funny thing about it, all the kids just sit right there, and then the adults were kind of drifting in too. So probably when we got through, it's probably at least, I'd say at least 125 people or more maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it was a lot of, uh, but they didn't, I don't think any left after the first, uh, they they wanted to see the, the adult version too. But uh, at, right after this, it was getting pretty close to dark. So uh, for some reason, I don't know exactly why, but they don't like to drive in the dark. It's almost, I guess, like a sin over there. But uh, they had, they had, somebody had said that uh, at one time they, they would find bodies in the woods, and I don't know. I think that was maybe terrorist groups, but but they hadn't in a while. But they just didn't want to. They didn't want to drive at night. So, but anyway, we left uh, as soon as we got through. We left and uh, we got on back. It was after dark, but we still got on back safely. But uh, Sunday night was the first night that I got my full night of sleep and uh, I finally got used to their time I think <laughs> but uh, but uh, Monday August the 5th uh, this was our final work day uh, we got there and, uh, as early as we could and we started uh, asking you know what do you need us to do and because we was through with the plumbing but uh, he, he just wanted to start toting these rocks and they was from from this long probably to to this long and they was mostly all the same width and same height but uh they had they had taken a bunch of rough rocks and they had kind of chiseled them down and uh made them where they would fit in the walls but they were solid and uh but anyway we started helping them we just toted probably for maybe two hours we toted blocks and uh i kept asking them, i said you want us to keep toting and, yeah I thought maybe we was getting too many, getting them in the way, but they said, no, just keep toting them, and they were starting to lay them. And, uh, but anyway, uh, by the end, of, the end of the day, we had got two courses uh, finished, and we started on the third course. And uh, after we had toted a bunch, we started helping them mud in the, the cracks and stuff, and uh, we we done the outside walls and all the interior. It was a lot of partition walls and stuff, and... Uh, after that, we said our long goodbyes, and we went, we headed back to Tenwick, uh, but uh, I wish we could have helped them one more day or even a half a day, but uh, it probably it probably would have tightened our schedule up, but uh, but I'll have to say this, we had, uh, we had four men and three women, we had uh, two Baptists, two Church of Christ, two Catholic and one Methodist. So we had a pretty diverse group going with us and uh but uh it was real good. Uh, okay the next day was Tuesday, August the sixth, uh before we left that morning. We could hear right there where we were staying about a couple hundred yards down the hill, we could hear uh you could hear a loud rushing deal and we knew there was uh, like a waterfall they had a dam going across a, a little old, uh, part down there, and uh, they had a they had a dam apart across part of it. Then they had two big pipes over here, and the water that went through the pipes. I think that's where they produced their electricity in that area. But uh, so we had wanted to go down there, so we went down there for about an hour, maybe or thirty minutes. Uh, we took some good pictures down there, uh, and then after this, we drove. We drove a pretty good while. It was uh, about lunch, I think, the time we got there. But it was Alice's mother. Her her mother's name was Sarah, and she lived. Uh, I can't remember the name of that that village, but uh, they had told us we was going to see some goats, and I was like, goats. I didn't, you know, goat. Just going to see goats. I didn't. I didn't care nothing about goats. I was thinking, well, maybe they don't have them in Kansas, and they want to go see goats. I didn't know. Uh, but anyway, they explained it. I wish they would explain it on the way there, but they explained it after we left there and was headed uh, back to another town. But it was a goat project. Uh, the one from Kansas, they had uh, a pastor Ezekiel had got with them. Uh, the widows in that area, uh, the widow women in that area, they was having trouble paying for their kids to go to school and keep their place like, uh, I guess it was land taxes or whatever. 
but they was having trouble with that, and uh, so they had bought them a male and a female goat, and uh, that way they could sell the milk, and they could uh, also have the goats could have babies, and they could they could make money that way, and uh, but y'all, it was uh, that was quite an experience. We walked; they was all wanting to show us their place, but we didn't have we couldn't stay all day, but uh, we did stay probably I don't know two or three hours. We ate lunch there and then stayed a while, but uh, they was all wanting us to come. We would walk way down this place, and it would be like a like a a grass, almost like a grass hut, uh, about the size of a big tent. Some places, some places a little bit bigger, but some of the the houses would be just like a few a few boards screwed together. But they were so happy and so proud for us to see their place, and uh, you know it was a uh, it was amazing then to, to see their goats and. To see their the crops and stuff, they had a lot of crops and they worked them. I mean, they worked them. You could tell. You could see freshly thing. And I asked them, uh, did they plow it or something? They said, no, hoe it with the the hoe. So they was they stayed busy. Uh, after we left there, we drove back to a a, a town. We was we was kind of headed back toward another direction. We we drove back to a town called or a village called Naruk. Uh, it was a it was a fairly nice place to stay. Uh, it looked like it was going to be nice anyway. I guess uh, we thought they would have hot water. It had a switch and all, but uh, that was uh, that that place there made my third cold shower, and uh, I learned something on that on this trip. The temperature of the water depends on the length of time you stay in the shower. If it's low, you don't stay in there long. If it's hot, you stay in there a while. But uh, but one time it was it was nice, and I I done got soap on me and everything, and uh, it went off. And uh, then the the race was on to get rinsed off, and because it it was like fifty uh, fifty yards back to the room, and it was cool over there. But anyway, that was a uh, it was fine. It worked out good. It was just some some of the showers were pretty cool. Uh, some of them, some of the showers were actually like it would barely, barely break the chill, but it was still cold. But it wasn't just freezing. But three of them were real cold. But uh, uh, Wednesday, August the seventh, that morning, we left out for uh, the Mesomara Game Reserve. Uh, this was a twenty-four hour tour. Uh, we got there around eleven o'clock. We saw all kind of stuff. We saw like six lines, uh, thousands of wildebeest. They was doing the, the migration some, and uh, we saw one hyena, uh, a good many elephants, uh, several warthogs, uh, all kind of stuff, cheetah, one cheetah, uh, hundreds of zebras, and I call them spring bucks. I don't know what they were, those little small deer. Uh, they had some bigger deer. It was called Elands. We saw about probably 80 to 100 of those. Uh, several giraffes, uh, several Cape buffalo, big herd of Cape buffalo. But uh, at the end of, they, they had a certain time that we had to be out of there. We had went in and got there right at 11. And uh, it was a long ways to it. And that, that road was, uh, a lot of it was dirt and it was bumpy. I mean, it was extremely bumpy. But, uh, but anyway, at the end of that day, we just we kind of ended up on the other side of the reserve, and we stayed there. And they had uh, some big, like some big tents. Uh, it was like a pretty big tent. It had two beds in it, and uh, uh, Randy and I stayed in one. Everybody had their own deal, and uh, we, it had a bathroom and a shower in it. But uh, anyway, the next morning we left there. Uh, we didn't get as early a start as I would have liked, but we got a, like I said, we had a diverse group that went with us. But anyway, we got off to a good start, we, and we had to leave there around 11. Uh, but the next morning, that morning when we left out, we went to the river, and we did see, uh, we saw several crocodiles. We saw a bunch of hippos, and we had one good picture. Uh, I hope it shows up good on the slideshow. But it was a it was a long, thin line of the, the wildebeest. You could see them from way off and all the way around. And it was a long line. They was crossing the road down in front of us, uh, just steadily crossing. 
and we saw uh, that next morning you could see several fresh kills it was you see like a circle of buzzards out in a well all of it was like planes and you would see a a big a big fresh kill but uh they did let us get out a couple times uh one time it was there at the river they let us take about a quarter of a mile hike and we was kind of up above the river i don't know 15 foot maybe but uh we would try to get right above the crocodiles and take a picture and uh but anyway that was pretty neat we saw you know along that we got to take some pretty good pictures of the, cro of the hippos and uh, there was one wildebeest up in a tree a dead wildebeest he was up in a tree i guess a leopard or something had drug him up in a tree but uh right before we got to the river there was a, a concrete monument and he stopped he said do y'all know what that is and uh, no it was the it was the Tanzania Kenya line, the, the border line, and uh, so we had to get out and get on the other side of it and take a picture in Tanzania. That was pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, after this, after the after that tour, we we left and we went back. Uh, we was gonna go back to the town we stayed in the night before. And we, de we decided on the way that we would just go all the way on to Nairobi. Uh, Friday was going to be our last day there, and we could kind of, we would be close to the airport. Because the, the driving around there was so wild and crazy. You was just hoping that you'd get to your next place safely. Uh, but we got there at dark, uh, and it was, a, like I said, it was a very bumpy ride, especially like in the big city or around the big city. It was, uh, it, the driving was real crazy. Uh, Friday, the last, this was our last day in Kenya. Uh, we was going to be leaving out right at midnight that night. Uh, we didn't, we wasn't in any hurry to check out. Uh, but anyway, we, we did, we checked out right at the time to check out and we left our bags there. And some of, uh, one, one of the ladies and her son, they, they uh, paid a little more to just stay in the room. They was tired, but the rest of us, we wanted to get out and kind of walk around before the, the long flights home. And uh, so we went, we went downtown and uh, the driver took us downtown. Uh, there was a 27 story building that had a place that you could get up and take good pictures on top. And uh, so we went up there and took, took a bunch of good pictures of the city. And uh, the Nairobi is the capital of Kenya. And uh, we didn't know what the population was, but I knew once we got up there, I said, this is a huge city. And, uh, but anyway, the, the population of the main city, I believe, was 3.4 million. Uh, the metropolitan area out around it was like 7 million. And they, was, they said they was fixing to do another census, and it would probably be more like 5 million in the, the inner city there. But it was uh, just big buildings way, way out in uh all the way around except for one spot it was one spot there that looked like they had a little room they could expand on out that way but but it was a huge place but anyway after that we ate lunch around two or three and we kind of rested up uh went back to the went back to the uh the motel and uh we started we got our bags back and uh, we started loading up about six or uh, and I think we left around seven headed back to the airport but anyway we wanted to make sure we could make it there and not miss our flight but uh that's about all I had I had one more thing I was going there's several things that we saw funny on the motorcycles and I was going to kind of do this last but uh twice we saw they had four by eight sheets of plywood on the motorcycle eight foot like across the seat uh, and I don't know how they didn't get run over doing that, but uh, they would put them on there, strap them down, and take off. And uh, we saw one motorcycle that had like uh, it looked almost like a like a half a pallet of water, maybe water bottles. It was a uh, three layers high, and it was probably at least that that wide. But uh, it wasn't a hard bottom though; it was sagging like this. <laughs> And they was going, but they did have shrink wrap around it. Uh, that was funny. And then uh, the funniest thing I saw on a the motorcycle, they had, uh, and I don't even know what the material was, but it, 
some kind of egg crate material. And it was it was at least four foot long, and then I don't know how wide, probably eighteen inches or two foot wide, but you could just see it was it was hundreds of eggs, brown eggs, you could see them. And they had it stacked up high. And I was trying to count the layers. It, it had to be close to twenty. But I should have been taking a picture of it. I don't know why I didn't think about that till they was gone, but he was going down the road, and he would get over on the side and go down the dirt, boom, 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 and the eggs was just, it was just, just kind of, I was like, my goodness, he'd get back over the road, pass, and then they'd go the other way, and uh, I was like, when he gets to wherever he's going, he's not going to have any full ones. They're going to be broke up, but uh, uh, twice we saw they would be dragging like a bundle of square tubing, like an inch and a half to two inch square tubing. You'd hear the awfulest racket, and you would look, and they would just be dragging it down the road, tied off to the motorcycle. And it was so we don't use our motorcycles near like they do, near near enough. <laughs> but uh, a lot of them, a lot of them had uh. They they had like large ice chest and they had a notched out spot, probably this wide, maybe this deep, and it would sit over the seat. And I don't know how they had them attached, but most all of them, if they didn't have something else, they would have that on there. But uh, that's about all I had. And uh, brother Gerald, you ready for the slideshow? Now I don't know how this is gonna go, but uh, I'm gonna get right here. Can y'all see? Can y'all see with me right here? This is just some pictures. Uh, the first one was a sunset when we was leaving the United States. This is a sunrise, and it was four hours and 40 minutes difference. Uh, but I, I said, well, I guess if you're going east at 600 miles an hour, you're 38,000 feet. I guess that's what you run into. You, you can, uh, as soon as it gets dark, it's not long. It's, uh, it's, it's breaking day. This is just some pictures from the plane. Uh, now this is when we got over the, the Tigris River. There were some boats and stuff down here. This is the room that we stayed in at Daguna the, first, the very first night we was in Nairobi. This is some pictures on the way to the work site. Uh, this is the fields of tea. They had them real, real neat, real pretty. This is uh this was the work site. The the guy on the left, Danny, that's the uh that's the guy that, that could understand plumbing and help helped a lot. This is uh our whole crew here. Uh Randy and Rachel. This is Pastor Edward on the left. And this is most of our whole crew here. Well, this is our whole crew here, I believe. Uh with some of the kids there. Some of that was in English. They they sang in English. They would do a verse in English sometimes and a verse of Swahili. This was at Timbuk where we stayed. This is uh, right here on the right. This is our like the dining hall and the kitchen. That's the cook walking in there. This is back the other way. This is the the kitchen, uh, dining hall and. Uh, Back up the hill there to the left is where we would load up. This is the, the hydroelectric station, the, the dam. and the, This is actually the a normal, a natural waterfall. This is just coming over the dam here. This was about 30 foot. The waterfall was about 75 feet. But it was a, it was a, a nice looking place. That's the picture straight down, straight down from the, the top of the dam. This is looking downstream. You can't hardly see it, but it, right there is that big, the big drop off, about 75 feet drop off. 
And this is looking across. We were staying on this side. That's just looking across. It. Pe people lived all up in the side of the hills, all up in there. This was a lady. We was leaving one morning. She had something. They would tote stuff on their head. That was a, a normal sight. Now, this is a, a, like a small town. This was just a normal picture of what you would see. You'd see motorcycles and just people going everywhere. And he, he was loaded with, uh, like, big water bottles or something there. And, uh, now this was at the goat project. This is a... Uh, this is the ladies, the widow ladies right here that was uh, that they had donated goats to. This was some more ladies that were there. This is uh, some of the goats there. That that's uh, Joan on on the left and Samuel on the right uh, with me and Isaac and Alice. Now this is Alice's mother over here on the left. And this is uh, Alice's brother here on the very right. And then the this is going down to, this is where they wanted us to come see their places. And uh, like their goats and their places, this is when we was walking down through there. This is where we stayed one night at Naruk. It looked like a nice place, but uh, this is some giraffes that we saw. This was probably... 30 or 40 miles before we got to the game reserve. Now, this was in the game reserve. It's a big male line here on the left and a female on the right. But uh, he drove right up to it, and the game wardens caught us. And they, they could have made us leave, but saw some zebras, a bunch of zebras, but. There's some Cape Buffalo. There's a big, there's another side. I think I took one picture. We took one picture this way and then back. There's probably one of our best pictures there. Another van load over here. They was watching them too. <clears throat> this is uh, at the end of the game reserve. Uh, this is like the, the tent area that we stayed in. That's one that Randy and I stayed in. Now this is the this is the wildebeest migration. You can barely see them, uh, but they were crossing the road right in front of us, and it went. Well, you can see them now better. Uh, it went from way around all the way back to the left too. I think that was the buffet line for most of the animals over there. Done, I think we've done like three videos, and that's that's one of the videos there, but it shows us. This is at the Tanzania Kenya line. We we got over in the back of it there in Tanzania to take a picture. These elephants, you can see the water, they had been out in the water. I don't know if they were swimming or just wading, but uh this is at the river, uh a good picture of the hippos. There's another family. I don't know if this was the same family or, or the family down to the left, but we took several pictures of them. This is some more hippos. This is the bridge. They let us walk around down to the bridge, and uh, one of the pictures coming up is a hippo looking straight down from that bridge. There, there he is right there. <laughs> he was right up under some big old hippo. And this was uh, Friday, the last day we were there. This is at Nairobi. This is uh, 
This is some pictures from that, that tall 20 story, 27 story building that shows how the, the outlay of the city. We just kind of took several pictures all around. This is just some more pictures. And you can see a crane in the, the distance there. This was the governor's house, the white building right here in front down there. This was a better picture of the, the, look, the construction they had going on. This was right in, this was down below that. I think that was, uh, I don't know if that was the president of Kenya or something there, but this is, uh, now this, we didn't get this far. They sent this to me last Wednesday. They sent that to me. And this is going, this is when we was flying out. This is going over Lake Erie. I thought we was fixing to be out in the ocean, but that was Lake Erie. Uh, this is the first place. This is at Daguna where we stayed that very first night, and that was the next morning, these two shots. One was down the hill. One was back up the hill. But we stayed in the place down the hill there. This is just a this is just a random picture of, of how a lot of the country looked across their crops and they just had houses and people everywhere. And you would it's not like around here, if you drive through there, you would see people out in these fields a lot of times. Uh this was somebody set up on the road that was had corn and uh they would chuck the corn and roast it and, and try to sell it. This was up on a big mountain. They had a, a cow hide. They were, this was at a place where they were selling different things. This was uh, one of the tea fields. So we showed several pictures of that, and uh, they was just real neat. You could see the people out here working them, picking the tea leaves. This is another good picture. That In the background, that's... Uh, the tea factory there, they had a big tea factory up on that was on the road going in. Now you saw monkeys a good bit on the side of the road. In different areas you would see monkeys. There's another good picture of the tea field. And you can see people all across there working on the top part. They they told me they would only pick just a few leaves off of each plant. I don't know I don't know nothing about that, but this is the the tea the tea factory there, the tea uh, the like the plant there that they sold tea. Now this is at the work site. This is looking back up the hill away from the church. The church was up to the left. But this is the rocks and stuff. That's this is before we got started at the work site. This is one we was trying to figure out what we was going to do. <laughs> this is just one of the houses here going on the way to the work site. That's a you could just see for you could just see for a long ways. And they all of them had several different area, patches of crops, different kinds of crops. Now, like post, they used post. Uh, some of them would have them touching like a barricade. This was pretty much like a barricade. And this is when the ladies were singing at church. That's the congregation there that morning. Now, I didn't take none of the pictures in church. I wouldn't have done that for a million dollars. But, but one of the ladies did. She took some pictures of uh, while we was in church. This was Alice when we was, we was speaking. This is when they lined up. This is when they lined up for the the toothpaste and toothbrushes and all. This is some more pictures when they were lining up to to hand out the toothpaste and toothbrushes.
That's back to the the tea factory. This is handing out the toothpaste and toothbrushes. That's the church in the background there. This is the children singing. Some of the children. They would sing one verse like, you know, like I said a while ago, they would sing one verse in English and one verse in Swahili. And you could tell what they were singing because they, they would sing enough in English that you could follow along. That's the that's their uh, that's their church sign there, Africa Gospel Church. Africa Gospel Church. That's one of our ladies helping their ladies. They were selling peas. They they had big old the peas were kind of short, but the the peas were big around the the in the middle there. This is when we was laying the blocks, or helping lay the blocks. This is when we was passing out the toothpaste, the toothbrushes. This is another. This was on the other side of that other picture that we saw. There was some on the left, and then there was some on the right. They were trying to cross the road. The giraffes were. Bunch of wildebeest, bunch of them. This was a good picture of a giraffe at the reserve. There's another picture of the Cape Buffalo. This was another group of elephants that we saw. There's the only cheetah we saw. We uh, we took several pictures of him. He stayed there for a long time just letting us take pictures of him. There's a, the hyena laying down. We saw him from a long ways off, and we knew it was something, but we didn't know what it was. We got up there close, and uh, he, he finally left and went out there a ways. He went just a little piece further, and he laid down in that grass, and you could not see him. That's one of the fresh kills. That was a pretty common sight. You would see a lot of old kills, too. That's a warthog out there. We saw several warthogs. Several elephants. There's some more hippos. That was a red and blue lizard. I told one of the boys that went with us, I said, he's in the wrong country. He was red and blue. That's probably one of the bigger crocodiles that we saw. We almost got a picture of another one. This is a that dead the dead wildebeest we saw up in the tree. Okay. <laughs> That's it. I appreciate y'all listening to this. I hope you got something from it. And uh, one one thing I I hadn't been on many trips, but one thing I have learned is uh. Is you don't have to be real good at anything, or you don't have to be real smart. You don't have to be skilled, but just just be willing to go and, and try to do the best you can. God God will help you when you get out there, because the, the plumbing was totally different. I thought it was going, you know, we might could really help them, but that that guy really helped us, because it was totally different. <laughs> but anyway, just let God just let God help you and use you. Thank you. I'm gonna have to use that one. There's two. No, I'm good. I'm good. There, there's uh, two things that I thought about the whole time we're sitting there looking at that. You know, God's looking for somebody that's willing, uh, and He lets us be a part of making a way. And every picture that you saw was taken by Antioch Baptist Church. Everywhere, everything you saw was touched by Antioch. Every footprint, 
every step that he traveled, our church was there. And that's the way it ought to be. That's a blessing. We was there because we got to be a part of him, sending him. We got to be there with him in prayer. And, and he represented our folks. And I appreciate that. Amen. And so thank you, Brother Jay. What an encouragement. And I'm going to tell you this, and I might get some folks mad at me for saying it. If you want to go on the mission field, God opens a door for you. We're going to do our best to send you. Pray about it. If God opens a door for you, I can't guarantee nothing, but I promise you we'll do our best to help you go and, and spread the gospel and represent Antioch Baptist Church wherever you go. So you pray about that. And just like Brother Jay said, and of course I, I am a testament of that, that God, God's not looking for intelligence. <laughs> uh, he, he's looking to, he can use somebody like me or, or, or somebody like us, then he can use anybody. Amen. And so amen to that. So if you want to go, you pray. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, it, as simple as the trip to Kansas, if God opens the door and our church has got some folks going, we want you to go. So pray about that. And if there's ever something that you need to do, uh, the Lord will use you and he'll bless you for it. I know that. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Jay, for going and for coming back and sharing that with us. It really was a blessing. And, and looking at all those pictures and just, I don't know, just a blessing to know that you got to go be a part of all that. And, and we'll be praying for him. He'll be leaving next Sunday, going to Russell, Kansas. Uh, and we're going to pray for them, pray for another another awesome trip. Amen. Any words?